Lights, camera, action. Whatever it is. Welcome back to the Oscar Real Podcast or show. Still in debate. Where You can say podcast, just don't call it a pod. I'm like a little alien ship, a little pod. God damn it. Welcome to the Oscar Real Podcast, where every week we review past best picture winners and current movies with Oscar Buzz. It's been a while since we recorded. Yep. What's been going on in our lives since then? Um, well, we made a trip out to Kansas City to see family and watch the Packers win. So that was exciting. Really fun time. So that was good. Um, but yeah, it's good to be back and talking about movies. We've seen a few movies since yeah, our last saw, show. Saw two last night. We're not talking about either of them today, but we will soon. <laughs> yes, yes, we'll talk about those soon. Um, but today we've got a few trailers to discuss, of course. Um, we will be getting into the current buzz, and the film for the current buzz this week is The Farewell. Um, we're also going to move into the um, Best Picture winner for 1998. That would be Shakespeare in Love. Uh, we'll talk about that, um, might get into a little debate with some of the other nominees for that year, um, and then close, close either with that or close with our Six Degrees game. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, uh, Matt, do we want to get into this week's trailers? Yeah. Yeah, we were, what, the first one... We were... We want to talk. We saw it at least once last night when we watched when we went to the theater. Uh, Dark Waters, water, waters, waters. Stars Mark Ruffalo. In his uh, maybe his first movie since uh, the Hulk playing in, in Endgame. Mm-hmm. This is back to. I mean, he's. I think of him as more of like an actual. Like a dramatic actor. Yeah, yeah, so this is back, I think. And not that he's bad in the Marvel movies, but this is back in his wheelhouse in the dramatic roles where he plays a, at least based on, from what I can tell in the trailer, uh, he plays a corporate defense attorney. Uh, but someone, it's like a family friend or something. Someone ends up knocking on his door and, try, and convincing him to represent you know, him, this farmer. The plaintiff side, yeah, yeah. Against a corporation. Yeah, a chemical company. I think they say DuPont yeah. in, the, in the movie. You know, I think they said based on a true story, inspired by a true story, I don't know how much of it was changed for film versus real life. But yeah, basically, it, it looks like Mark Ruffle is going to, um, yeah, work with this guy who's a farmer, and all of his uh, cows are dying, and mm. they... Um, seem to trace it to like chemicals in the water supply so then of course you know it's investigation into well is this like groundwater or is it like drinking water that like families and peoples are drinking from so it's kind of a expose dramatic very aaron brockovich ish (laughs) yep um but yeah done done by the same like what producer or something that Mm -hmm. did um um, Spotlight, which Mark oh. Ruffalo was in too, so like yeah. that that kind of uh, style movie. So yeah. which which I love, I love those like investigative thriller yeah. type things. So I think this looks really good. Um, I'm really excited to see it. Yeah, I, I am too. It, a lot of tension in the trailer. Mm-hmm. I mean, um, a lot of scenes where because Mark Ruffalo appears to have been, you know, as he said, we said earlier, a corporate defense attorney. But now he's kind of flipping it on them, and he's got colleagues who are mad at him or yelling at him. And the trailer ends with him, you know, running to his car and, you know, putting the key in the ignition, but then kind of thinking whether he should turn it on. Uh, I think implying maybe there's a bomb in his car or something along those lines. Seems very tense. I love 
yeah, like courtroom dramas or invest, you know, movies where like these kind of corporate investigations are going on. So this is right up my alley. Uh, I hope it's good. Uh, it looks good in the trailer, but you know, we'll wait to see. When does it come out? Uh, yeah, let's see. It comes out this month. It comes out November 22nd. So right in that, you know, that, that's a good sign. When movies are released is, is a Around the holidays. Is around, yeah, yeah, is a decent sign on how good they are. If a movie's being released in January, it's going to suck. Sorry, <laughs> but if it's coming out in November, December, the studio has high hopes for it. So, yeah, uh, yeah looks good. Mark Ruffalo looks good and gained some weight for this role. <laughs> I'm excited to see, uh, like, when reviews come out for it. Yeah, for sure. Um, next one is uh, Ford versus Ferrari. Um, I'm sure you've seen uh, multiple trailers. We've seen a few different trailers for this one already. So I feel like this one's getting a lot of attention. Um, well, we've got Matt Damon and uh, Christian Bale as like the lead. Yeah, I mean, you're going to get a lot of attention with those two as the leads right away. I mean, they're both phenomenal. They both won Oscars. Matt for writing, but he's been nominated multiple times for acting. I mean, this looks awesome. I love the director, too. It's James Mangold, who did my favorite comic book movie of all time, Logan. Uh, and he also directed Walk the Line. So he's 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 got a great pedigree or filmography as a director. And, yeah, this, this movie looks good. And what I like about it is it's kind of, um, it's about a very specific event right it's about a it's about something i don't know a lot about either which is cars and racing especially overseas so you know they can go into great detail about this like this one, one race very specific yeah. thing yeah instead of a giant event or giant something that everyone knows about so it's going to get critiqued and picked at you know and could hurt it reviews wise it's a very specific thing that i don't know a lot about so it's about like the, the twenty four hour at Le Mans, like that race, right? Yeah, which I don't know a ton about. Uh, just based on the name, I, I'm assuming that there's some kind of racing going on for twenty four straight hours. Uh, maybe some kind of relay between drivers, because I can't imagine one person is driving for twenty four hours straight. I mm-hmm. I don't know a lot about it, but yeah, uh, Christian Bale plays Ken Miles, who's a real life driver. Like this is inspired by true events or based on a true story. Um, Matt Damon plays Shelby, who's like the famous car designer for uh, Ford. For Ford, and uh, yeah, the whole point is Ferrari's won this race a bunch of times in a row. I think they say five in the trailer. So then Ford, you know Henry Ford decides to win. He wants to beat Ferrari, so he hires Shelby, who then hires Ken Miles, and it's uh, you know about them trying to make a Ford car beat Ferrari at this race. So. I think it sounds really good. The last great race movie, or the last race movie I remember seeing was Rush with Chris Hemsworth, mm-hmm. uh, which I thought was really, really good. And I, I feel like this movie is kind of, you know, time frame wise is going to be very similar to that kind of like, in, you know, all the events are going to take place in this like couple months or year. So. Yeah. And I, you know, I think we've said this with boxing movies before. It's not like I watch a lot of boxing and in, in real life but boxing movies are always really great mm-hmm. i kind of feel the same way about racing i never watch auto racing but um car movies are always just really cool so i think this one yeah. looks i mean even just like the scenes from the trailer i think this one looks really exciting so um i'd probably put this on my list too i don't know if i necessarily need to see it in theaters but it's something that um i, I yeah i think looks really entertaining yeah, yeah. Looks like there's some, it comes out November 15th, so I think it's premiered already. Mm. Right now it's sitting at 88% on Rotten Tomatoes, so okay, it's off to a good, usually they start out higher and then they'll slowly drop, you know, on Rotten Tomatoes, like percentage wise, so, uh, so far it's looking uh, pretty good. It's with 59 reviews, which is a decent amount, so yeah, I'll keep my eye on this. I think this could generate some Oscar buzz later in the year. Yeah, for sure. Last but not least, what's the uh, last trailer of the week? Uh, the last one is the the big one. It's been out for a little while now. It pre- came out on Monday Night Football. Star Wars Rise of the Skywalker. Uh, the official trailer came out. And just as a Star Wars nut, I was very excited to see this trailer. 
the last Star Wars, the last Jedi, when that came out two years ago, I, I was feeling a little Star Wars fatigued. I didn't, I didn't love it. I liked it, but they haven't made a Star Wars movie in a while. So I think I've kind of, the juices are flowing again. So when this trailer was released, uh, I was very, very happy and very excited. And then ticket sales went on right away. So of course I went out and bought tickets for instantly. Um, but yeah, this looks, this looks good. I mean, they don't give away a whole lot in this trailer, but there's a lot of things that are just going to make fans happy. There's a scene where C-3PO says to like, to everyone like oh, I'm taking one last look at my friends and I mean that's meant you know for the audience to feel like oh like C-3PO um I'm, I'm still very excited about it the Emperor's coming back it'll it'll be interesting to see how they kind of tie all nine of these movies you know how they end it mm -hmm. uh but yeah I'm always game for a Star Wars movie I don't know what else how much more needs to be said about it just because they didn't show a ton. Yeah, I would say it was very uh, vague and they didn't give away much at all. But you're right, like enough to kind of tease you and get you interested. Um, so, yep, of course, December, December release yep. will be huge again. So, perfect. Should we get into this week's current Buzz movie? Yeah, let's do it. So this movie uh, may be a little under the radar, um, but it's called The Farewell. You have the director, writer. Name. Yeah, uh, writer, director, Lulu Wang, and it's an A24 production, which they only make good movies. This movie, it's kind of based on her life a little bit, like, a, you know, something that happened in her life. Mm-hmm. Um... So, yeah, it stars, I mean, really, I guess the only person you would recognize possibly is um, Aquafina. She's kind of an, an actress, comedian. She's been in uh, Ocean's 8 mm -hmm. and Crazy Rich Asians. Yeah. Um, I think she hosted SNL last year, too. Um, but uh, I really like her. I think she's really funny. Um, but she uh, has a serious role in this movie and... Um, it's about her and her parents. Um, They're all born in China, but uh, they move to New York City when Aquafina's character, her name is Billy, um, they move to New York City when she's really young. Um, her dad works as an interpreter, and um, the movie starts, she's kind of walking through uh, New York City, and her grandma's calling her from China. Um, grandma is referred to as Nai Nai yeah. in the film which um uh, yeah I, just, I, I really like that term um and uh see so, I mean instantly you can tell that just by their conversation they're very close um Billy with her grandma yeah I mean in this nuts but I would basically I mean they give it away in the trailer her grandma is sick and dying but the family doesn't want to tell her so they they go over to see her and the the movie's basically this internal struggle for Aquafina on whether to tell her grandma whether she's dying or not because the family's keeping it a secret. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, no, I, fantastic movie. Aquafina is phenomenal in it. Yeah, uh, yeah, she was really great. Like I said, she this is the first uh, like dramatic role I've seen her in. Um, I think she did such a great job. Um, I would say what probably ninety percent of the movies in um, subtitles. Yeah. Um, you know, most of the movies spoken in Chinese, except occasionally um, her and her parents will kind of slip back and forth out of English. Yeah. In thought, English. I thought around, that was. I thought that was funny. Around how the family, yeah. No one else in the family speaks English, so like to have a private conversation, they would they would speak English. Mm -hmm. Where like as an audience, like usually you'd speak English to be in the loop, but you'd you'd actually when you'd hear. English in the movie that means they were trying to keep the rest of the family out of the loop. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so, um, sorry, I, it's, it's hard for me to like talk about it without being too spoilery. So I don't yeah, know. No, that's I fine. Say. I mean, we can give, you know, our, our scores on it and maybe say what, oh, what yeah. awards we think it'll get nominated for. Okay. Like I, I gave this movie uh, right now, an 8.7, and I know I think that's what I gave Once Upon a Time in Hollywood as well. <laughs> but, like, I do, I think I enjoyed them both about the same, just for different reasons. Yeah. Uh, 
I I would probably give this I don't know eight eight point nine eight, yeah, yeah probably the same range I I um you know when I walked out of the theater I remember just looking and saying that was everything I expected that movie to be and like everything I needed it to be like it mm-hmm. was um you know like the trailer showed like there's this Billy has this internal struggle with oh my gosh like my grandma's dying but culturally <laughs> we're not supposed to tell her um but you know, she also wanted, you know, she cares so much about her grandma. So it was just, it was a really sweet story and they had great moments of, um, just kind of like sweet comedic relief. And, um, I mean, all, all of the characters were just, I think really, really fun, really fascinating people. Yeah. So it was just, it was such a nice story. Um, yeah, I just, I really liked it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think the two awards, that I have as of right now is good chances that they're going to get at least a nomination for is actress for Aquafina and writing for Lulu Wang. I think those are the two that are, as of now are a pretty good chance. I think it, it might have a slight chance of getting a best picture nomination. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if it didn't get one, but I wouldn't be surprised if it did get one too. And this is more of just a hope, but I hope that, the actress that played Night Night gets the Best Supporting Actress nomination. Yeah. Because I thought she was really good. She doesn't speak a word of English in this movie, which I don't think really matters. She's still phenomenal in it as this woman who doesn't realize what's kind of going on, but she's just really sweet and has moments where, you know, even though she doesn't know why Billy is, like, upset, still tries to lift her up. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep, exactly. Um, so yeah, I, I think a really good movie, um, I, I think it's rated PG actually. So uh, yeah. on, honestly, um, uh, I think anyone would, would enjoy this movie. Um, great family movie, um, kind of gets you thinking and talking about stuff. So, um, definitely recommended, uh, if you can see it, we happened to see it at, um, one of the discount theaters here in town. It wasn't out for very long, but we did have a chance to see it and I'm hoping, um, you know, it'll be available on more platforms and stuff for people to see later. Yeah. For sure. Mm-hmm. And that's why I hope it gets nominated for some awards to bring more awareness yeah. to it. That's, yeah, because it... I mean, that's that's a win for movies like this that don't get huge releases or... or don't have a huge budget. budget. Yeah, exactly. Like, getting those nominations are what kind of draws attention to them. So that's why I hope it gets some of these larger nominations. Yeah, I would agree. On to spoilers. I know you're saying it's tough for you to talk about certain parts of this movie without getting into spoilers. So, so yeah. Where did you want to start? Um, I guess. So, um, yeah, kind of from the beginning after um, Billy gets off the phone with her nine eye, um, she goes and sees her. Um, her parents at like the you know the house she grew up in and she finds out that um grandma has some sort of terminal illness and um you know her mom and dad say but you know we're we're not telling her we can't tell her um from their perspective their culture it's about um you know, it doesn't just affect that person, it affects the family. And so as a family, they're kind of there to protect her and help her. And, um, you know, Billy has a big struggle with that because she's like, you know, grandma deserves to know and kind of do things on her own terms. Um, and she finds out that, um, you know, everyone wants to plan to see grandma again before she passes away. And so they tell Billy that, um, hey, your cousin, if you remember that girl that she's been, he's been dating for like two months or whatever, um, we're, we're going to tell grandma that they're getting married and we're going to have a fake wedding so that the whole family can get together. That's the question. Was it a fake wedding or were they actually getting married? I think it was a fake wedding and they did not actually get married. Okay. I wasn't sure. I had a feeling that it was like an actual wedding. I I mean, I don't know for sure, but that's kind of what what you, you my, yeah, yeah. my impression was that it was a fake wedding. Okay. Okay. Sorry. I just, I wasn't too, too sure. Um, 
And uh, so, yeah, mom and dad head over to China and meet up with the family. And then you see, well, this is probably like the next day or two days later, I guess. I don't really know. Um, uh, Billy shows up. And at first, her mom and dad are kind of upset because they said, no, like you wear your emotions on your sleeve and you don't really agree with this this decision. So grandma's going to know that there's something wrong. She's going to yeah. know that there's something up. Um, but, you know, of course, she's so close with her grandma that um, she does. She buys the plane ticket and she finds her way to China. And, um, you know, the whole family is there, aunts and uncles. Like I said, her her cousin that's getting married um, and everything. So, yeah, the whole movie is kind of about this weird kind of <laughs> two sides to it where grandma is so excited about this wedding and she's so excited to have everyone together and she's planning everything and she wants it to be perfect and you know billy's kind of watching from the outside being like you know i, I don't know if this is the right thing to do or not um but it's really sweet they because I, I think it takes place but probably over the course of a week or something yeah like it's that. not long um and yeah they they go through with this wedding whether it's fake or real or i don't exactly know oh, <laughs> but sure. um you know they go through it and then um you know, it ends with Billy going back to the States with her parents. And, um, you know, she's just really, really sad. She's watching Grandma through the rear view um, window, of course, just being really sad. But then you see her back in, uh, back in New York. And she just kind of has this moment of, like, man, like, my grandma's really strong. And just, I, I think she kind of has a little bit of a change of heart. Um Probably the best part then, of course, is at the end, they show, you know, a video of um, the director's real life nine nine real <laughs> that the yeah. story is based on, which, you know, obviously, like, that's always one of my favorite parts. Um, movies that are bra- based on a true story. I love seeing, um, like, the real life people at the end. Uh, and I think what made it even better is that they had text then on the screen that said, um, this is Nai Nai. Uh, she was told that she had a terminal illness and would die. Uh, that was six years ago. Yeah. She's still <laughs> She's alive to this day. Still alive. So. so, yeah. Funny thing. Also, I just did a quick Google. Funny thing. I typed in the words, was the wedding. And the very first autofill was in the farewell reel. So, I guess <laughs> this is a question Many not just had. us are looking into. And according to this, it was a real wedding. Mm. Like, they were... They were together for three months and okay. they, well, they got married. I gave the girlfriend uh, props just like in the movie watching like, wow, this girl's going through. Well, because so Billy's cousin, like her aunt and uncle um, cousin, they they moved to Japan. Yeah, they he and so grew the, up in Japan, like yep, her cousin. Yeah. Yep. And so the, the girlfriend's Japanese. And so yeah. um, she, has she doesn't a little, understand. <laughs> yeah, say, she doesn't know what's going on. She doesn't... Um, you know, she doesn't always speak Chinese, understand the language, so she's kind of out of the loop on a lot of this stuff. And that was actually one of my favorite, like, mildly comedic parts is just watching all of these scenes with this family, making all these decisions, and the girlfriend's like, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's happening, and this is such a weird thing to be part of. But she's there, and she goes along with it. And, yeah, um, yeah so if that's a real wedding, I good for her yeah, I, don't, I don't know <laughs> yeah we always try to think of a couple things we like do and don't like about the movie and i'll be honest trying to come up with things that i didn't like about this movie was hard because i, I liked it so much I, I have nothing that i disliked um, about this movie. okay fair enough so there you just went that was your turn yep cool um for me i, I tried i tried digging and one of them was was that I thought it was weird that, like, the girlfriend of this cousin was going along with this. <laughs> Maybe it's just she didn't know, but I feel like she had to know a little bit. But, I mean, this is based on a true story, so I guess it can't be that much of a stretch. Unless this part was, like, kind of Hollywooded up a little bit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, for her to go along with all this after being with this kid for three months mm-hmm. was kind of nuts. Yeah. Um, and the only other thing, and this really isn't, like, a negative. It's just, I wouldn't say this is a movie for, like, everyone it is like it's a drama it is a straight drama there are comedic moments i i want everyone to go see it because something that i really like about it is it's about a different culture so you do learn 
a lot of new things. But I always try to think of like some of our friends where they they prefer like the Quentin Tarantino or like the action movie stuff like that. Went to go see this. Like, would they enjoy this movie? Like, I could see someone going into this movie and thinking it's kind of boring. I don't know how you feel about that. You can completely disagree with me on it. But I just, I loved it. But I could see how someone else could go into it and think think that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I feel like it's it's such a sweet story. Like, I don't know how, I mean, you're right. I, there, I mean, this pe- is your could, kind of movie. People could be more or less interested in it. But at the same time, it's like, it's just, it, it's, I don't know, it's a nice story. So, mm-hmm. you know. No, that's, um, I guess I'd stretch a little bit to try to find something because I yeah. do, I like this movie a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I just, I felt like, um, you know, at first when you said that you thought maybe Aquafina could um, have an acting nomination for it. And at first I thought, eh, I don't know about that. But it, she was so, like, her emotions were so raw. And you could tell that. You know, because sometimes that can be a difficulty with movies that are in um, foreign languages or rely heavily on subtitles. And sometimes there are certain, um, like, you know, intonation in the language that doesn't doesn't translate. But I think her emotions um, were just, like, so raw and so apparent. Like, you always knew how she was feeling. Um, so, yeah, maybe, maybe um, an acting nomination for her isn't too far out there so yeah I think she did a great job I really really enjoyed it plus I think that um you know I kind of think through the movie you're kind of thinking uh yeah I don't know if this is the best idea I feel like grandma deserves to know um but then you know at the end I was like hey in real life we told grandma this six years ago and she's still alive and you kind of go man like you almost think if you had told her um you know maybe her her outlook would be different who knows if she would still be around six years later. So uh, kind of an interesting little nuance at the end. Yeah, that's some that I like in in this movie specifically, but in movies in general, when there's like a, a decision that needs to be made or some kind of conflict, when both sides can seem like the right answer. Mm-hmm. I mean, those are when it's a good conflict because it isn't a clear choice. And that's what this was. It's you know, being raised in the U- U.S., I mean, they say in the movie, it's, like, illegal to not tell someone if they're dying. <laughs> yeah. So it's just morally you would think you'd want to tell someone, but based on their culture and their belief, like, I totally understand why you wouldn't. So I really like that kind of internal conflict because, yeah, like, it, it, both sides kind of have a fair point. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, you know, and, and one thing... Uh that I kept wondering throughout the movie was uh, whether Grandma actually knew. Oh, yeah, you brought that up, which I hadn't thought of, so that's kind of a good point that you had brought up. Um, Because most of... So how the family finds out is um, the Grandma's sister always goes with her to her doctor's appointments, and so all the information gets, you know, is provided to, like, the sister, and she kind of decided whether or not to tell uh, tell Nai-Nai, and then, you know, of course, the sister told everyone else in the family but you know there were a few moments where I kind of thought hmm, gosh I wonder if grandma knows and I think the biggest part for me is when um they go to um the like go, her, go go to grandpa's her husband, yeah. yeah her husband had passed away and so they go to like Billy's grandfather's um grave site and they kind of they they do some um yeah, so... Uh, it, it was... Yeah, they do, like, a cool little thing that I hadn't heard of, and this, again, goes with, like, kind of seeing movies about different cultures because you can learn something. They go to his grave, and they, like, leave a bunch of food, but they, like, open it because it's, like, that way the spirit can get to it because if you don't open the food, they can't get to it. So they, like, open all this food and everything and leave it on the on the grave. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, it, you know, as they were, um, so, like, they had this kind of, you know, celebration of his life and who he was, which was really touching. Um, you know, it it didn't feel too sad or too somber. Like, it was definitely, like, a, a more more happy than that kind of feeling. Um, and then, you know, when they're leaving, Nai Nai says, oh, well, you know, when it's my time to go, 
I would, she's like, I would want my ashes scattered. I don't remember where she says, but she kind of throws a plan out there, which, um, you know, a few scenes earlier, um, Billy's dad and uncle are talking about, you know, she, she needs to plan for stuff, you know, after she passes away and there needs to be stuff taken care of and who's going to do that. Um, and so I think it was really interesting for grandma to kind of throw out, Hey, here's a plan. So that was one moment where I thought, Hmm, I wonder if grandma knows something. Um, so like I said, that's, it's kind of nice when there are, um, some moments out there up for debate. Mm Mm-hmm. No, that was, that was a great point. Absolutely. Yeah. And just enough, I'm looking at like Gold Derby and a lot of people have for predictions, this can always change. They have Aquafina in like the four or the five spot for the best actress nomination. So we'll see. I kind of hope she gets it. I was like seeing it when. Someone new. Someone tradi- different. Yeah. Someone traditionally like comedic or funny can turn in a good performance and get an Oscar nomination. That's always great. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Anything else to add on the farewell? Uh, no, I think we touched on pretty much everything that I want to talk about. Because I do, there's a lot that I love about this movie. I guess just to close it out, I kind of mentioned earlier that like I hope the actress that played Night Night gets an Oscar nomination. That's just because I think her and Billy, when they're together, are like some of the best scenes. Because mm-hmm. you can just, and this goes to like their acting chops, but you can tell that they love each other, but, like, just Aquafina's always dealing with, or Billy's always dealing with this internal issue of should I tell her or not. So I, their scenes together I thought were just uh, were awesome. So After editing this episode, uh, I realized there was one more thing that I wanted to bring up about the farewell that I forgot to say. Uh, so I wanted to put it in here after the fact because uh, I thought it was pretty interesting. After we saw the real clip of Nai Nai, I wanted to look into whether she knows that she's sick in real life or not. Because the credits after the movie said it's been six years. So I looked into it and they still, in those six years, hadn't told her. And then when production started on this film, they still didn't tell her. Uh, because they thought she was going to pass away before the movie was even made. So to this day, I couldn't tell you whether she actually knows or not. Uh, I thought that was pretty crazy, pretty interesting. Cool. All right, so that's it for this week's Current Buzz. Um, Let's move into this week's Best Picture winner. Um, As we mentioned at the top of the show, we're talking about the winner from 1998 which is Shakespeare in Love um I had never seen this movie before um so I was really excited to watch it Mm -hmm. when we picked this one um so yeah do we want to get into um who's uh kind of our top actors director yeah so you know Came out in 98, as you said, directed by John Madden, not the football. <laughs> the football, no. Got the comment or coach and <laughs> old uh, analyst. That would have been. Can what? you picture him being a director? <laughs> Boop. The Actually, Brett we should. Put over there. Boop. And we should, you know, Brett Favre, if he just throws more touchdowns, Boop. they win the game. <laughs> I wish he would have directed this. I'm just going to pretend he did. Okay, oh directed God. by John Madden, the football coach. Um, stars, uh, Joseph Fiennes, who I think he's the brother of Rafe, uh, yep. Ruff, uh, who's the more well-known guy, guy from Schindler's List and everything. Uh, Gwyneth Paltrow is the leading role. She's the top bill on this, uh, who is fantastic. You know, we'll get into it, but she won an Oscar for this movie. I mean, the cast in this is great. It's got Jeffrey Rush, got Colin Firth, Ben Affleck, Judy Fo- Foster, Judy Dench, um, kind of a fictitious... A uh, movie about how Shakespeare wrote Romeo and Juliet. Mm-hmm. Before we get into the uh, kind of plot of the movie, I just wanted to mention all of the Academy Awards that it won. So obviously, it won for Best Picture. That's why we're watching it. Um, also, won Lead Actress, which went to Gwyneth Paltrow. Uh, supporting Actress went to Judy Dench, which this is one of my uh, like standout facts from the Oscars is she basically had, what, one scene? 
I'm glad I had that as like a like a trivia thing too. She yeah. had I can't remember how many scenes it was. I wrote down how many minutes of screen time she had, yeah. which it was six. Yeah. In a she plays Queen Elizabeth, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, she does. Whoever in in was a queen. Yeah, one that, of the Queen was, Elizabeths. I don't know. Uh, in a two hour long movie she had six minutes of screen time. Yeah, and that garnered uh Best Supporting yeah, Actress a lot, Award. A lot of people say it was like a makeup for... She got nominated early, like a couple years prior and didn't win. And, and like the Academy does that every once in a while where they yeah. kind of say, Oh, sorry, here's an, here's an award. I mean, I can't tell you who else was nominated for Supporting Actress that... And we don't need to get into it. Yeah. But I'll say, like, going into this movie, not having seen it, but knowing that Judy Dench won... Um, I was a little underwhelmed, but thought, maybe that's just because. You'd see her a little bit more. Well, no, I I knew that she wasn't on screen for very long, but I'm like, wow, this must be like super powerful, and I think I probably had you know wrong expectations for it, but I wasn't as impressed as I thought I would have been. But mm-hmm. anyway, um, it also won uh, best screenplay, uh, set direction, costume design, which like I said before, set direction. Uh, sorry, set decoration, costume design. Those are kind of no brainers for. Especially like old English uh, movies, I feel like yeah, it's like just Victorian era. Victorian type is stuff, just yeah. oh my goodness, um, and then uh, also for original score. So yeah. took home seven seven awards that night. Yeah. Do you know how many total they were nominated for? I think it was thirteen. Wow! It was it was like the most. I think it was the most nominations that year. Mm-hmm. Uh, let me just take a while. I'm looking that up. A quick, uh, you know trivia thing so yeah you said it won score right yep yep so this was actually back when they divided score out between traumatic films and comedic oh so, interesting. so it won score for like a comedic hmm. movie mm-hmm. um but like another movie won score for like dramatic which is kind of weird yeah and then and it won original screenplay yeah um so yeah it it was nominated for 13 academy awards which was the most for that year and yeah, it won comedic score, dramatic score was won by Life is Beautiful. Can't say I've heard of that. Yeah, that one, we'll, we'll touch into it a late, little later because it was nominated for Best Picture as well. Oh, but okay. Um, but yeah, so Matt, do you want to give us just a quick rundown of kind of what the story's about? Yeah, so I kind of, you know, brought it up a little bit earlier, it's, it's in a nutshell, it's about William Shakespeare and how he came to write Romeo and Juliet. Uh, But basically, in the beginning of the movie, he's got writer's block. So he's promised Jeffrey Rush plays like this theater owner uh, that Will writes plays for, and he owes him a play. But he's got writer's block. Like the movie opens with him just crumpling up paper and throwing it around his apartment. And meanwhile, Jeffrey Rush is being kidnapped by like lone shark ish characters or anyway like he ends up having to write a second play so like will has to write two plays can't do it uh he's got writer's block and he eventually meets gwyneth paltrow's character who what's like she's royalty in some way i mean maybe royalty isn't the right term but like she's someone of importance and she's from an upper class yeah she's she's upper class and they end up falling in love and she becomes like his inspiration for writing Romeo and Juliet uh throughout the movie there are like little things that happen that lead to things that happen in the play uh like he's talking with another playwright and tells him the name of his play is like Ethel, the pirate's daughter, and this other playwright goes, uh, you know what a good name is, uh, Romeo and Juliet. So it's, it's kind of playing on, like, he gets the names from someone else. But they end up falling in love, and he writes the play. Ben, ben Affleck is in it as one of the actors. And during this time, women can't be, act like, actors or actresses, like, on, on the stage. So... Mm-hmm. Gwyneth Paltrow's character pretends to be a man so that she can play um, Romeo. So there's, like, some comedic... Like, this is a comedy, so there's, like, some com- 
funny moments that happen, but she pretends to be a man, ends up getting caught, and then uh, in the end, when the queen, Judy Dench, her only scene, like in the end she comes to this play to watch Romeo and Juliet, and the actor that's supposed to play Juliet can't do it, uh, Gwyneth Paltrow's character steps in and then Will plays Romeo, so then they do the play like on stage together at the end. So it's it's one of the few considered comedies to win Best Picture in like the history of the Academy. Uh, it, it I would still call it mainly a dr- drama. It just has comedic relief in it. But it, it's a good movie. I really like this movie. Uh, though, you know, a lot of people, when they talk about this movie, it's a lot of negativity because of what it beat out to win Best Picture. But this is still a really good movie, and it's a movie that I really enjoy. Yeah, and like I said, I had not seen this movie and didn't really know what to expect going into it. But, um, yeah, I absolutely loved it. I thought it was a lot of fun. It was just really clever and interesting. And, um, yeah, I just I, I thought it was a really kind of neat take on William Shakespeare. And, yeah. you know, and I think, too, part of you just, you know, you always see that, like, one picture we have in mind of William Shakespeare he just kind of seems like, you know, this nerdy, stuffy kind of writer. But, um, you know, Joseph Fiennes just really, um, you know, kind of out there and much more charismatic than... So So I think he brought, like, a lot of life into it, which was fun. Um, but yeah, like I said, I, I really liked it. I thought it was a fun movie. So, um, you know, if I gave it a score out of 10, maybe, maybe like a... 7.9 and 8 kind of somewhere around there like I really enjoyed it um it's definitely rewatchable I always kind of take that in consideration like it's a movie I could watch again and I think still be really entertained um but it's not something like if I never saw a movie again I don't think I'd be heartbroken yeah. over it. I think I gave it a 7.4 uh so yeah I do like this movie a lot like you said the thing that's kind of nice about it is like they kind of spin like what happened like they clearly change like history this isn't a historically accurate movie Mm -hmm. like it is in some means like the costumes i think are meant to be fairly close to reality i'm not yeah and like the the design of the theater and like you said like um women couldn't act on stage yeah so So, like keeping that stuff but like the love story isn't real but it it's like a different twist or spin on like will shakespeare and how he came up with the play that's that's kind of fun to watch. Like it's a fun movie to sit through, like you said. So yeah. I do like this movie a lot. Yeah, I would agree. Um, but as I alluded to earlier, a lot of people, you know, one of the questions that gets asked about the Academy a lot is like, oh, what movie shouldn't have won best best picture, or what should have won best picture? And that's where this movie kind of gets an unfair beating, I would say is because while I do like this movie a lot, a lot of people have a negative connotation with this movie because it beat out what a lot of people thought should have won Best Picture in 1998, and that's Saving Private Ryan. Mm -hmm. So a little thing that we have here is, uh, well, I guess, you did you want to run through the other, like the Best Picture nominees of this year? Yeah, so the other nominees for 1998 um, included... Um, oddly enough, Elizabeth, uh, light, I don't even know what that's about, so I make a joke that it's Queen Elizabeth, I have no idea. Um, (laughs) Life is Beautiful, uh, Saving Private Ryan, and The Thin Red Line. Um, so yeah. How many of those have you seen? Uh, I've uh, only seen Saving Private Ryan. And Shakespeare and We watched The Thin Red Line. Oh, yeah, yeah, and The Thin Red Line. Yeah, sorry. Um, but... Yeah, I think it's one of those things that if this had been nominated in a different year, I I think people would probably see it in a different light, but you're right, because it it beat out Saving Private Ryan, I think people kind of have um, a negative reaction to like, oh yeah, oh, that movie won. Yeah, like, looking at these, uh, I haven't seen Elizabeth. Life is Beautiful is an Italian movie where R- Roberto Benigni, who wrote, directed, and starred in that movie, one best actor famously (laughs) where he like jumped on chairs and like jumped around on stage because he didn't think he was going to win it's a movie about a dad and son during the holocaust and 
it's it's kind of a sweet movie not to touch on it too much but it, what happens in that movie is to kind of keep the horrors away like the of world war ii and the holocaust the dad who roberto benini plays turns it into a game so like he pretends to play hide and seek with his son where he has his son hide in different spots during the war and then whenever he walks past where his son is hiding he he makes funny faces and stuff to keep his son like not knowing what's going on in the like in the real world so uh it is a good movie but that's what that one's about uh thin red line is so is a, another world war ii movie but based on the Pacific side, which I don't think it's a lot of attention in movies. So that one is really good. And then Saving Private Ryan is the one that most people think should have won Best Picture. <laughs> we just watched that recently because I figured we would want to talk about this a little bit. What do you think should have won between Saving Private Ryan and Shakespeare in Love? It's hard because they're such completely different yeah. stories completely different movies um and i think that's what's always hard about picking the best picture winner it's like you're yeah they're all movies but um you know they can be completely different topics stories which i think makes it a little difficult but um it, you know honestly like i'm kind of on the fence i don't think i would have minded either way um you know i think a lot of people go oh my gosh but same Private Ryan, it's like one of the best war movies, if not the best war movie ever made. Um, and, and I mean, a lot of war movies do win Best Picture. So some people kind of say, oh, like, that usually wins. Why didn't it this time? But, you know, in other years, people are like, oh, Shakespeare in Love. Like, oh, the Academy loves that kind of, like, sappy, artsy kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I'm kind of a... Take it or leave it. It doesn't mm -hmm. really bother me either way. Yeah. No, that's fair. And I think a lot of people, it's hard for them to decide. So I've got a little, I don't know, it's game, maybe not game, but tally sheet here. So I've got four categories. We'll each kind of vote on either Shakespeare in Love or Saving Private Ryan on each category. And then I have a fifth tiebreaker one in case we, we end up tied here. Okay. Okay. So music slash soundtrack. Which one would you put your vote to? I'm voting... I might actually vote Shakespeare in Love on this one. Yeah, and I I would agree. Um, I mean, most... I mean, there isn't a whole lot of um, music in Saving Private Ryan. Of course, John Williams did it, so I feel kind of bad. I know that's the only reason I hesitated. <laughs> like, it's John him. Williams. But, you know, it's like it's it plays a smaller role, so I would have to give it to Shakespeare in Love. Yeah. On the music. Uh, next, we've got cinematography and set design. Hmm. See, this one's tough. I think the way you are talking earlier, you'd think it's slam dunk in one direction, but I'm actually voting Saving Private Ryan on this one. Mm -hmm. Just because of all the different village scenes and war scenes, and even uh, we're kind of throwing costume, uh costumes maybe into this a little bit i know the costumes are great in shakespeare in love but you know you gotta wear correct world war ii attire yeah yeah um yeah i would go with saving private ryan as well okay this next one is acting now while i think tom hanks did the best acting job out of anyone in these movies i'm voting for shakespeare in love because they have probably five or six actor actresses in that movie that could have or should have been nominated. And just, I think the acting all around is better in Shakespeare in Love. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, Sam Private Ryan had a great cast, like a lot of, a lot of people that you would recognize. Um, but I would agree. I'm going to go with Shakespeare in Love on the acting as well. All right. That has nothing to do with the fact that I'm not a big Tom Hanks fan. Yeah, that's right. You're not, are you? <laughs> not the biggest, but, you know, he has some bright moments. <laughs> uh, what about the writing or story? Which movie had better? Oh, man. I 
I mean, I would say, I mean, Shakespeare in Love, like, that's, it's, it's more engaging. It's, um, you know, about this kind of weird forbidden love kind of thing, this evolution of their relationship. But at the same time, uh, I mean, Saving Private Ryan, Tom Hanks had some, had, had a great monologue in there, um, you know, and when, when they show up and tell Matt Damon, who plays Private James Francis Ryan from Iowa, um, when they say, like, son, you're, you're going home, um, and he said, no, you tell my mother that all of my brothers that I have left are here with me now. Um, I mean, just absolutely gave me chills. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's, I, Shakespeare in Love is probably more consistent from a writing perspective, but I think St. Private Ryan had some really big moments. Maybe that's also some recency bias too, because it's been, um, more yeah. recently that we've seen that than Shakespeare in Love, but, um, I don't, I, I'm, I'm leaning towards Saving Private Ryan. I don't know. What do you yeah, think? I, so these were both in the same writing category for the Academy. And sh- and as you said earlier, Shakespeare in Love won the Oscar for writing. And I can see why it won. Mm-hmm. Because, like we said earlier, it's like a different spin or twist. Like a fun spin and twist on history. Yeah. I'm, I'm going with Saving Private Ryan, though. I think... So Shakespeare in Love is great. I think it it's a little over the top in certain points. And I think the way that Saving Private, like the story works within the war in Saving Private Ryan, where, you know, you get to see these different parts of World War II following these eight soldiers around trying to find one soldier in the whole damn war, as they say in the movie, was just so well done. And just the dialogue in it, too, is so good. Like, there's just a couple scenes where, like, they're in the church and you can see you get no backstory on these guys going into the movie. But I feel like by the end of the movie, I feel like I know a lot of them. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. that's a testament to the writing. Yeah. Uh, You know, the way that there's this running gig that they don't know what Tom Hanks did before the war. Yeah, or like where where he's from. Yeah, like the like, bet is on where he's from. Yeah, which in a war movie you'd be like, that isn't you don't need to know that, that's not important. But they make it important. They make it part of the story. Yeah. So I think the writing and story is better in Saving Private Ryan. Mm-hmm. Not by much. Like Shakespeare in Love is great, but I think it's better in Saving Private Ryan. Yeah. So if that's what you agree with, then we're at a tie two to two and my tiebreaker number five category which i always try to take into consideration for best picture winners is historic importance Mm, okay because i when i think of best picture i think of like a movie that makes you feel different or think of things differently than you did before uh and to me that's saving private ryan because it gives you a different aspect. Um, it get, it makes you learn about World War II, and it shows you things that happened to soldiers. It makes you think about it, you know, that it, think about things that maybe you didn't know or think of before. The first 20 minutes of that movie is just incredible, or it's just D-Day. Like, that alone is just, it's very intense, but it's very well done. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, kind of what you're saying is, like, the movie kind of gives you a different perspective, different outlook on the world or a certain situation or something. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, then in that case, I, I would agree that Saving Private Ryan is, yeah, the one that's going to make more of a difference in how you see the world. There you go. Change change the history books. <laughs> Saving Private Ryan won Best Picture in 1998. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Maybe in an alternate universe. Yeah, That's what maybe it did when someone's talking about how Shakespeare and Love should have won <laughs> exactly. in that world. Mm-hmm. One thing, one quick thing I'll say that I think might have hurt, why, like why Saving Private Ryan didn't win Best Picture, that some people say, and I might agree with this a little bit, is we mentioned earlier Thin Red Line was nominated for Best Picture. Yeah. It's another World War II movie. Mm-hmm. Um, that is considered a top five war movie of all time, like Thin Red Line. So to have two historic like, like phenomenal great, yeah like war movies. war movies come out in the same year some people felt like the votes they might have split the votes in a you know in a, to an extent survivor term for yeah. there for you uh they might have split the votes a little bit on that with some people where if 
if Saving Private Ryan or Thin Red Line would have came out in a different mm-hmm. year, that that wouldn't have happened. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I think yep, that might have hurt, that might have hurt it to an extent too. But interesting. Yep. Anything else on Shakespeare in Love? No. Or any other that, nominees for that year? Eh, not much other than just to run through the act. Some, most of this we've co- covered already. Roberto Benigni won Best Actor. Gwyneth Paltrow, Best Actress. Judy Dench in Six Minutes of Screen Time won Best Supporting Actress. James Coburn won Best Supporting Actor in 98 for Affliction. Which, hmm. um, to quickly hit on that, he is phenomenal in that. He's a terrible person in that, but he's phenomenal. He, he was kind of like a veteran actor. He, he'd been around for decades and decades. Uh, a lot of people were happy for him when he, when he won this Oscar. If people haven't seen that, they should go see it because he's um, obviously amazing in it. And then lastly, you know, we were debating between Shakespeare and Love, Saving Private Ryan. I mean, they split Best Picture, Best Director. Shakespeare in Love won Best Picture, but Steven Spielberg won Best Director, his second Oscar, his first being Schindler's List, which, you know, if Saving Private Ryan isn't the best World War II movie of all time, Schindler's List is. So yeah. S- Spielberg winning uh, Best Director there. Yeah. And, and we'll get to Schindler's List. We will eventually. Someday here. And then one more thing to note about the... The Academy Awards in 1998, at least, or the ceremony that happened in 99, but the awards were for the 98 films, is... So the Best Actor nominees were Tom Hanks for Saving Private Ryan, Ian McKellen, Gods and Monsters, Nick Nolte, Affliction, which we talked about earlier, James Coburn, one Best Sporting Actor for that film, uh, Edward Norton, American History X. If you haven't seen that movie, go see that. It's nuts. Uh, and Roberto Benigni for Life is Beautiful, which he event- he won the Oscar for that movie. Someone who isn't present out of those five is uh, Jim Carrey. Uh, because he was he won the Golden Globe for Best Actor in a Drama for this year for the movie The Truman Show. And so... So when he didn't receive an Oscar nomination, he only became, I think, the second actor in the history of the Academy Awards who won the Golden Globe for dramatic actor and didn't get an Oscar nomination. The first one being Omar Sharif for Dr. Zhivago back in the 60s. So that was kind of, kind of a, in my opinion, a, disrespect move that the academy did towards jim carrey because he's mostly known for comedies so a lot of people kind of speculate that the academy didn't want to give jim carrey an oscar nomination and after he did not get an oscar nomination for that movie he kind of publicly said all right forget it i don't care about the academy anymore because i in my opinion he deserved a nomination for the truman show if anyone has seen the truman show he's phenomenal in it that movie all around is incredible. Uh, looking at the people who are nominated, I don't know who I would take out uh, of the nomination because you always you always got to think who you're going to remove when you're going to add someone to it. And I mean, looking at this list, I mean, Tom Hanks is gr- deserve well deserving for Saving Private Ryan. I love Ian McKellen and Gods and Monsters. Nick Nolte. Fantastic in Affliction, Edward Norton, I mean, hands down, that's his best performance, in my opinion, in American History X, oddly enough, I don't, I haven't seen it in years, so maybe I need to see it again to get a different opinion, but oddly enough, the guy who won, Roberto Benigni, I didn't love in Life is Beautiful, so I would honestly maybe take him out to put in uh, Jim Carrey, but... You know, maybe I need to see Life is Beautiful again uh, to kind of, maybe I'll have a different perspective on it. But just felt like I had to bring up the Jim Carrey thing because uh, out of all of his performances, I think the Truman Show is his best and most deserving for an Oscar nomination. Um, Perfect. Do we want to play some Six Degrees? Yeah, why not? Okay. Um, So we are, we're going to go from The Farewell uh to Shakespeare in Love. Yep. Somehow, some way. Some way. We'll get there. Um, do you want to call the movies this time or the actors? Duh. 
Doesn't matter. To me, how 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 are you feeling? Um, I'll do the movies. Sounds good. Perfect. Okay, so let's start with the farewell. Yeah. Uh, I will go with Aquafina. <laughs> Good choice. Yeah, I feel like I would have really <laughs> screwed you up if I would have went with anyone else. Um, from there, I'll go with Ocean's 8. That should give you a good uh, yeah. number of people to choose from. Like, yeah. There's a lot of people in that one. Let's go with Anne Hathaway. Mm, Anne Hathaway. How about um, Princess Diaries? For a second, I was like, oh, Judy Dench. But no, that's Julie Andrews. Um, <laughs> Not the one same. or two. Uh, the first one. Oh, okay. Chris I Pine. never Chris, saw Chris the Pine's second out. one. Can't pick Chris Pine now. I'll go, I think Julie Andrews is probably the most well-known <laughs> in that movie. So I'll go with her. Um, here's a twist. <laughs> How about Aquaman? Oh, shit. For yeah, those of you who voice, don't know, uh, she's the voice of some, like, sea the creature at the, at the end. end. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> um, oh, shit. Please, the, the mom. Nicole Kidman. Um, hmm. Oh, one of my favorite movies, Lion. Oh, yeah. Love that movie. That's another one of those where, you know, they get to the end and they show the real people and you mm-hmm. just, oh my gosh. Oh, so many emotions. Yep. Uh, Dev Patel. Oh, I shouldn't have done that because I don't know anything else that he's been in um, except some dog Millionaire. Yeah. And the only other... Person that I know in that. What's her name? Frida. Frida Pinto. Um, man, this one might be tough, but she's in. She's in one of the new Planet of the Apes movies. Um, Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Yeah, she's in the the first one. The there. first one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'll go with that one. Um. John Lithgow. Ooh, John Lithgow plays um, the shitty dad in This Is 40. Oh, yeah, he does. That's not what I thought you were going to say, but that's true. (laughs) (laughs) He does. Um, I will go with... I'll go with Paul Rudd. I feel like there might be a lot of options there. Paul Rudd. How about Avengers Endgame? Oh, yeah. You'd think that would open up a lot. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, duh. Yeah, Gwyneth Paltrow. Boom! Shakespeare in love. Just gotta get to an MCU uh-huh, movie. Uh-huh. That, that, that that's... is not who I was trying to get <laughs> connect to. It's funny because I was just like, oh, Gordon Paltrow, she's not in anything. I was trying to get to Ben Affleck. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's. I think that's a fun thing about this game. We always try to get to, like, yeah, big ensemble kit. Like, Ocean's Eleven, Ocean's Twelve, those movies are always great to get to because there's so many big names. Um, yeah, and some of these Avengers movies, too. You can usually, those kind of open it up. So, there you go. From The Farewell to Shakespeare in Love. Yeah. Only a couple movies. (laughs) Yeah, well done. Awesome. Uh, Well, that is it for this week's Oscar Reel podcast. What films are we talking about for the next show? So next time is 2001, which, do you remember which movie won Best Picture that year? Um, Beautiful Mind? Yep. And the recent oscar buzz movie that i had lined up to review is another psychological movie and that's joker perfect beautiful mind and a messed up mind yep exactly (laughs) or two messed up minds depending on how you look at it yeah a little bit but 
So yeah, you're right, kind of psychological type stuff. So perfect. Um, look for us on the next show then. Yeah. Have a good weekend.